Yes, sir. We are back at it again, guys. Picking up at the same location here in Galleria Farms in Doral, Florida. <clears throat> so the last video, or one of the videos that I posted a while back, somebody said that why don't I just go in blindsided or do a U-turn back here inside the warehouse and then park in blindsided. Well, there is no space to do a U-turn back here. Look, I'll show you guys. See, cars here, cars there, cars over there. So there is, there's really no space. So there's not much you can pretty much. There's not much you can do. In order for you to back it in blindsided, it has to be all the way from the street. It's a little uncomfortable as well. Um, I'm the type of guy that I don't like to blindside in unless I really, really have to. Not because I'm bad at it. I mean, I don't consider myself being bad at it. I don't consider myself being the best at it either. But um, you know, I, if I can always avoid it, I always try to avoid it. So today, you know, usually I get door six or door five. Today we got door five. Nobody's here, so it should be a very simple process to back it in. But I just wanted to show you guys that there's still not enough space with these cars here. When I back it in, the good thing is that these cars are up to here. If I had cars up here on this side, Iguana, over there. So if I had cars on this side, it would be super, super hard to back it in. I am a big truck. This is not a day cab. Um, it is a big nose truck, which it does not turn. The turning radius on a P is not the same as one of these modern Freightliners, you know? Um, it is what it is. I got to work with what I got. I mean, I'm glad that that's what I got, to be honest. And look at this guy. Look at him now. I didn't even notice him. Look at him now. Look at that door. So he's on the line. So now I have to be really, really extremely careful when I'm backing it in because the last thing I want to do is yank this guy's bumper or something. So I got to back it in more towards this side then strain it out and get as close as possible to this guy without obviously damaging his stuff. Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and back it into door three because there was some guy there. I'm going to back it into door three and, and be like, hey, man, you know, the guy in door six did not line up the truck correctly. And uh, look at this. See? Look at the line. Look where he's at. So pretty much he has plenty of space over here. He didn't do it the correct way. So pretty much that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and, and just back it into door three and let him know, you know, let him know what's going on. They said to park in door four not door three like i wanted to because they're gonna use door three for something now i don't know i guess for that other guy that just came in um so yeah all we're doing is waiting for that reefer to cool down the box and then after that obviously open up our doors back it in on the way i don't know if you guys saw one of the previous videos but i actually got my dad's tandems to work already so this axle actually goes up and then this one dumps the the air pressure on it when i have my 48 um, I used to have dump valves on both axles. There were spread axles and they used to have dump valves on both. So the connection was there. All I really did was just find what was what and, and, and you know, and, and hook it up, that's it. 
So now I have like that fourth wire hanging, you know? But um, other than that, everything else was there. So yeah, pretty much. Like I said, let's just wait a few more degrees. And then once it's at temperature, the, uh, once it's at the temperature they wanted, which is 35 degrees, we open up our doors and back it up. Next day here guys. Oh last night we made it here to Robert Dale, Alabama. <clears throat> We're at the Oasis truck stop. Usually when I leave Miami, this is where I was end up by because uh, this is where the, the logbook reaches, you know. The logbook actually ends here, so you can't go any further. <clears throat> just got up now oh, I can't show it a little because I have a C on it I got up now I'm gonna do, go ahead and do my pre-trip inspection and get it going what the hell these big ass boats my dad has here man what the hell's wrong with this shit <clears throat> so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and do my pre-trip inspection and get it going because we still have like 10 and a half hours to go all the way to uh, Roanoke, Texas. Let me tell you, man. Truck stop's empty. Let me tell you that it is it is cold. When I got here last night, it was like 39 degrees. I mean, it's not freezing cold, but it's cold. You know, I slept the truck off. No issues at all. Very nice and cool. But I got up this morning, man. I was freezing. And it's like 40-something now, but the cab hasn't get heated up, so... <laughs> Anyways, let me go ahead, like I said, do my pre-trip inspection, make sure we don't have any issues at all, and let's get it going. Let's get it going because we still got plenty of miles to push towards the back. Get up, 
do our check-in <clears throat> and then go right back to sleep because my appointment is not till 9 a.m. And if you guys follow the channel, you guys know that I've done this look plenty of times and these people, when it comes to this product, I don't know what it is. I don't know if they, they, they open the box little by little, each and every box. So I don't know what the hell it is, but this shit takes forever. So, uh, I mean, it's fine, guys. I got nothing but time, but damn, you know, sometimes it gets stressful. <laughs> so, uh, nothing, guys. Let's just continue. Let's finish this trip off. And uh, hopefully everything turns out good. All right, guys. Just made it to my destination. Uh, we on load right there in that building. I'm here in the side of the road because there's their parking spot um, is literally full of trucks. Usually when I get here at this time, there's a, there's a few spots open, but today, I guess that everybody came earlier and they have later appointments and everything is packed. There's the Goblin. Got another truck in front of me here. There's another truck. There's two trucks across the street. One over there. One here. There's one back there, right? Yeah, there's, there's a few more trucks back there. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I like this place here to be honest. I've been here a few times and I like it The only thing I don't like is they take a long time I don't know if they take a long time because of what I'm bringing or if it's because they take a long time with everything But um, what I like about this place is that you literally don't have to get out of the truck You can do the check-in with an app So I like that, you know, you don't have to talk to nobody or nothing you do, the, you, do the, you do the check-in with an app Once they're ready for you, they call you you go to the guard shack with the truck, you give them the paperwork, and that's it. When they're done with the paperwork and you're done unloading, uh, they bring out the paperwork to your truck and you're good to go. Like I said, the only thing I don't like is they take long. But I think, to be honest, I think it's because of what I bring. Because I've seen people that come in here and they leave pretty quick. I mean, yeah, it takes them a few hours, but it's not the same thing two hours than freaking eight hours, you know? So, uh, yep. So I'm gonna go to sleep now, take a nap for like four, hour, four and a half hours. Then do well, I'm gonna do my check-in now. Go to sleep and then get up for my appointment, which is at nine. And then another four, five, six hours should be my 10 hours that I have to kill. So after that, then we can go ahead and, and head out to the valley. I do got a load. Today is Saturday. I do got a load tomorrow, Sunday. So. Yep, we'll see how that goes.
Let's take a quick update. Well, we're still not in Austin, Texas. There was way too much traffic, and I knew it was gonna catch me. Leaving where I left, at the time I left, you know, imagine, I was 530 miles away, and I still have 380 miles to go. But anyways, I uh, wanted to show you guys, look how beautiful of a sunset we got. I've always said it, man. One of the things that I love about driving is seeing these sunsets. Clear, clear, clear skies. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead, uh, stop in, there's a, there's a QT right after San Antonio. <coughs> Sorry, there's a QT right after San Antonio. We're gonna stop there, have some dinner, and then continue after that. Maybe take a nap or something, but we'll see. I think I'm gonna continue. I don't wanna get there to the valley so, so late. But, um, I don't know, we'll see. Like I said, I do have a low for tomorrow, so. We have to be there by 10 in the morning. Alright guys. Alright guys, so I finally made it to my destination over here in the valley where I'm gonna be loading tomorrow. And I wanna take a quick second end the video here, but before I do that, um I wanna warn you guys about something that happened to me today. I mean I know that this has been going around for a long time, but it just it just never happened to me. And if it did, I was never able to to catch it, you know. So I get to my delivery, you guys saw it, I get to my delivery, I open up my doors, I always look inside, make sure that there's nothing, you know, nothing going on, like a pallet flipped over or something like that. And uh, when it's time to pay for the lumper, which was like, four hundred, it was $469, something like that, ridiculous amount, um, I get the lumper paper, you know, obviously I call a broker, I tell him, hey, you know, it's $400 something, this and that, blah, blah, blah um he sent me the, the com check number i get the the paper and i read the description of why it was so much money and automatically i see and it, it's it's crazy to believe that shippers and receivers and receivers are doing this because we are getting everybody takes money from us and to know that shippers and receivers do this as well it's it's ridiculous you know because we're supposed to be in this all in together to help out each other, not to steal from each other. If that's if, 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 if that's understandable. But anyways, when I got the paper, it says there was 18 pallets sideways and that there was six pallets flipped over. And I obviously, I immediately called the broker and I told him that I can guarantee him that that was all BS, you know. And he said, why is that? And I said, well... You know, I, I talked to the broker myself first. I told him, well, listen, first of all, when we got loaded at the location, um, they, they did not put 18 pallets sideways. If I would have had 18 pallets sideways, I would have had, I would have had half a trailer. So they did not put 18 pallets sideways. I was there the whole time. They did not do that. The guy only put five pallets sideways because he thought my dad's trailer was a 48. And I told him, no, 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 it's not a 48. It's a 51. There's, there's differences. I told them that, that's a 51. You can fit the same amount of pallets as a 53. The only difference is that at the end of the 53, you're not you're going to have two feet. Then in the 51, you won't have those two feet. You'll literally finish the load right at the door. With the 53, you will have two extra uh, spare feet. Uh, yeah, you will have two extra spare feet that you, you won't be able to use at all unless you have like, a, unless you want to put your load bars there and stuff like that. So I told them, that right there is BS. And for them to say there was six pallets dropped to the side, that was BS as well when I opened my doors. Um, I made sure that there was nothing. I always do that. And if and if, it, if it was flipped to the side, I would, I would tell the guy, yeah, it was flipped, but there wasn't any pallets flipped over. So to see that shippers are trying to steal from other shippers and from other, you know, from other receivers and stuff like that, that's, that's, that's that's ridiculous. That's crazy. And guess what? The broker told me, man. He said, Javi, I appreciate you telling me this. Um, I've been he, he told me like this. I've been catching on this for the past few weeks. That every time a driver goes, remember the guy does the load with different drivers. 
I think like four or five times a week, you know, he gives me a load, but I'm only one truck, but he has other people that, gives, that he gives the load to, that he gives the load to as well. And he's told me that he has seen that in the past three months over here, every time he has to send out a lumper, that lumper gets higher and higher and higher and higher. And I know that you were not supposed to put any pallets sideways because he was bitching about it. Last week, they charged him. Um, I think he said like five hundred and ninety-five dollars, just just for lumper, just to you know to uh, take out that product out out there and, and organize it. And I told the man, listen, if they charge you that, go back into the receipt and make sure that you see why they charge you that. Because from my experience, I told them it was my mistake as well for not taking pictures. I guess I I, I kind of have fought with it. But um, I told him I don't have pictures, but what I do have is that I have a video of me back in the truck and opening up the doors. And you can tell that there's no, uh, you can tell that the, the product all the way towards the end of the back of the truck. That it's not halfway trailer or nothing like that. It's literally all the way to, towards the back. And I told him that I have that, that if he wanted me to send that to him, um, that I can do so as well. So guys, make sure that, make sure that uh, you guys are aware of this. Like I said, I've seen it. I've never seen it. I've heard of it happening before. I just never thought that it would happen to me. And thank God that I was able to catch it on time like I did today. Um, I called the broker immediately, immediately. Like I said, I didn't want them to blame that shit on me or nothing. That's the last thing I want them to do. You guys know that I never I never use low, low bars. Never, never. But I always take my time. I don't drive like a maniac. I don't drive extremely fast. I take my time. Um, things could happen. I, I just, you know, I'm always aware of my surroundings. So I can minimize, you know, things of happening to me. But um, things could happen. And if I would have dropped the pallet, I would have said, yeah, I dropped the damn pallet. I mean, it could happen, you know. Uh, something else is those pallets are all wrapped up in that white, uh, not white. It's it's the that white, that uh, see-through nylon thing that they use to wrap it. So... And it's not, they're not heavy pallets. Like literally you can get the pallet by the bottom and move it with your hand full of, full of, you know, stacked up with, with boxes because it's a, it's a, it's a light, it's a very, very light pallet. And being all wrapped together, the pallet does not go anywhere at all. And they were sitting side by side next to each other. So it was, you know, you can't, they, they didn't fall. There was no pallets, no pallets fell over. Um, Something else was that, oh, something else, check this out. When I got the papers, there was a paper that I was supposed to turn in at the guard shack before I left. Well, that paper, I took a picture of it, and I'm looking, I'm reading in the paper, and the paper says that I was done by 11.40 in the morning. So I got in, I, I got in, my appointment was for 9 o'clock. I got in, I did my check-in at 6. They gave me my door like around 8.20, and at 9.05 or 9.10, I got down from the truck, and I turned off the reefer unit because they were done unloading. By the time they finished checking everything, it was 11.40 in the morning, which is good timing. Well, they let me go at 2.30, I was talking to the broker, and at 3 p.m., I was leaving out the door. So why, if I was done from 11.40 in the morning, why did they give me my paper and my stuff at uh at 3 p.m. or at 2-something, you know, 3 p.m.? That was something else that I brought to the broker's attention. And the reason why they do that, either either they did it because they were taking long or they did it for, for another reason. They put on their paper that I was there and I left at 11.40. That way, if the broker calls now to ask for detention, they're going to say, oh, no, no, we can't give you detention because your driver left here at 11.40 in the morning. So I, I also sent that paper into the broker. I told them, listen, I asked you for the lumper at this time. I have the receipt that it says the lumper was paid at this time. But yet their paper says that I was done by 11.40 in the morning. That does not make any sense at all. So there's a few things that obviously I told him about. And he has to, he said, man, I, he, he even told me, I appreciate you bringing that up to me. Because usually I give the load to other people. And they do the load and that's it. Once you're done with the load, they never do the load again. And now I see probably why, you know. Um, so he, you know, he was very thankful that I told him about it. And that, uh, you know, that nothing... Um, he was very thanks. He was very thankful that I told him about it because he was he had a suspicion that 
things were happening, things that didn't make sense were happening, and he and nobody never told him about it. So, like I said, he was very thankful for that. Um, so, I think I just wanted to let you guys know, you know, be aware always, because people are just waiting for us to slip a bit for so they can come and give it to us. And at the end of the day, all that means money towards us, and they can harm your company as well. Some brokers don't hear out drivers and the first thing they do is go ahead and go on the company thing and then they start writing stuff that is not true you know so you know just be aware of, of everything guys you gotta you, you really gotta be aware of everything surroundings your brokers your fuel price everything <laughs> everything it's like everything's against us so it's 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 crazy just wanted I, you know i just thought that i shared that story with you you know it's it's crazy it's unbelievable and it's ridiculous and it's disrespectful towards me but um like I said, I mean, it is where it is. Anyways, this is all that I got for you guys in this video. If you guys made it this far, make sure to squash that like button, guys. If you guys have not subscribed, make sure to do so as well. And hit that bell notification. That way, once I upload a video, <clears throat> you automatically get it. Um, as always, stay safe. Peace and keep on trucking.